So now JP can talk about AWS. Very good. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon. Not everybody please fall asleep after uh, your heavy lunch, which I suppose you had. Um, I would like to uh, introduce, I don't think you've, you've met, I don't, would like to introduce Mark, who spends his life recording these talks. And it's a huge shitload of work, particularly when I speak, because everybody else was nicely standing in one spot, but I don't do that. So I make him run, okay? <laughs> Maybe we can give him a hand for all the video work that he does. Thank you. So I would like, sorry? I just zoom out just more. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I'm too fat? <laughs> Um, I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, Ansible AWX. Ansible AWX is the upstream project from which uh, Tower, uh, Ansible Tower will, will, will be produced or has been, no, is being produced. Ansible Tower is a, commercial, um, is a commercial offering which was created by Ansible Works, the company founded by Michael Dehan, who is the, the person who created Ansible. Who has heard of Ansible? Who uses Ansible? Okay, who doesn't use Ansible? About 10%, uh, ZFS is next door. Um, <laughs> no, but maybe I can convince you to, uh, to actually use Ansible because AWS is really, really a, 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 a quite a very nice thing. I was going to introduce myself, but I decided not to because I listened to Frank's um, thing this morning, so um, I, I won't do that. Um, m many of you know me anyway, so. Okay, so what is the AWX project? It's a very strange name. AWX is the open sourced uh, code stream of what used to be called Ansible Tower, or respectively still is called Ansible Tower. And it's basically a web-based engine, a web-based user, uh, user interface over the Ansible engine. Um, so in other words, we have a, a web-based interface, which is a rather sexy looking thing, a web-based interface um, over what we would generally call Ansible Playbook run. So Ansible Playbook, if you run Ansible today, you know that you have, an Ansible, you have Ansible Playbook as utility, you have your playbooks, you have modules, you have um, all sorts of additional data maybe that you have, and you have inventories, and all this together causes a run. And um, we in AWX have uh, an, a, a few new terms because we have to work slightly differently, and I'm, I'm going to try and make these terms a little bit interesting for you. So AWX is not only a web-based user interface, but it's also a REST API. And contrary to many products where a, um, uh, I won't mention any names, of course, but contrary to many products which work and where people say, oh, we need an API, so they sort of slap on something on the side which more or less works, or more or less, like, more or less nice, or more or less not nice. Uh, AWX, interestingly, was created as this REST API, and everything we can do in the user interface, any screenshot that you'll see in a moment, any uh, uh, data that we can get, any uh, entry that we can make over the user interface, you can, we can also do over the REST API. Now, I point this out, and I don't tire in pointing this out, because on the one hand, um, web-based user interface is a nice thing, and this is, is, is nice for somebody who likes clicking. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily like clicking and so what is interesting is the REST API because it allows us to kick to uh, launch for example Ansible playbook runs from any external system for example where's Fabien from uh, Jenkins for example okay or from Rundeck from, 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 from anything from any from, from yeah from anything so um, AWX is as I say a web-based user interface and a REST API built on top of Ansible, and AWX is uh, provided, is delivered with Ansible. What on earth does AWX mean? Well, it doesn't really mean much, says Michael Dehan. Um, it basically means Ansible Works. That was the original company that created it. Now, as most of you, I assume, know, um, Red Hat purchased um, Ansible.com, and uh, Red Hat does with their products, whatever they buy, what they always do with at least, I think all, or at least very many, or most of their products, and that is they, uh, they open source it. So we were, I was in particularly hoping that they would uh, very quickly open source AWX because um, AWX is a, is a fine thing, Ansible Tower is also a very fine thing, but it's quite expensive. So there's something that you would purchase if you need support, etc. but it's, it's something that's not, uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily pay it out of the um, out of the uh, postage, uh, out of postage stamps. 
so it took it took quite some time and it uh, was then finally after approximately a year and a half it was uh, open source as this product called AWX now if you've ever heard me uh, or seen me speak about Ansible you will uh, recognize this diagram at least parts of it where we have Ansible which uh, communicates uh, over SSH to our nodes, those are the machines that we're going to uh, deploy onto, and Ansible uses uh, playbooks, has um, a host file or an inventory file, and what we now have with AWX is literally a closed system here, it's a completely offline system, it's a system which is designed in such a way that we won't even log on to it, even as uh, system administrators we won't log on to, or we certainly won't typically log on to AWX, I'll explain later on why we won't do that. And so AWX is the um, the REST uh, user, uh, sorry, the REST API with a user interface and uh, drives Ansible and Ansible Playbook onto our nodes as we did uh, so far. Now the question is though, how do we interact with AWX? Where do the playbooks come from, etc.? What suddenly gets a very, very high, um, very high up in the in the list of priorities that we need is a, uh, a software configuration management system or version control a repository. We have in AWX the possibility of um, integrating four different version control systems. They are Git, Mercurial. Uh, subversion and Red Hat Insights. I would like to ask you a question. Does anybody know Red Hat Insights? Wow, <laughs> three people. You are you are the first three. Oh, you you work for Red Hat. That's not fair. So there are only two. I have the, you ha <laughs> oh, you have worked. Okay, so there's just one person who knows. That's out of 60 people I've trained in the last I don't know how many months. Uh, it's the first person that's ever heard of this product. It I think it's uh, must be awesome uh, because um, nobody. Use it. Yes, exactly. It's, it's been, it was created for the NSA, probably. Okay, so uh, we have um, um, a uh, the repository which gets uh, sort of a first class first class position. And what we will be doing, what system administrators will be doing, is they will be um, uploading or pushing changes to playbooks, for example. We can even push changes to uh, inventory files, which I'll uh, mention in a moment. Uh, that was a correction that I made this morning, which are then synchronized in to AWX, and from there they are then, um, they are then used. What features do we have in AWX? We have, first of all, we have this little rocket and this little rocket shows up in a, in a bunch of places. The rocket is what we call push button deployment. We can literally, at the push of a button, we have a web-based user interface or a REST API um, endpoint where at the push uh, of a button we can, uh, for example, uh, allow first level support to, in the case of this particular problem, launch a playbook. And this uh, first level support person, male or female, doesn't matter, or any sex, Shit, I wrote myself into something here now. <laughs> well, any human, um, or also not human, can... <laughs> the, 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 the kunst is to find out when you have to stop. Anyway, so you press this button, and then you... Um, what you actually do is to trigger the run of a playbook, or even a set of playbooks. So we have a dashboard, I'll show you a picture in a moment, or a screenshot in a moment. We have what is called real-time playbook output. Real-time playbook output is a wonderful word for something that we've all, all everybody who's used Ansible knows, and that is what you see on the console when you run a playbook, a task, a task, a task, and it was okay, and was not okay, was changed. Now, this, this high-tech word, real-time uh, playbook output, uh, output, becomes very important because what we'll be seeing is not just prints. I'll show you in a moment what actually happens here. I'll try and explain what actually happens here. We have Galaxy integration for those who actually use Galaxy. Um, so if you use Galaxy and roles from Galaxy, which of course you should because they are fantastic, uh, then you can uh, uh, reuse these roles in um, AWX um, more or less transparently. And what we can also do is create so-called um, workflows and a workflow is uh, basically a chain of so-called job templates. This word is, I think, uh, the first time that I'm using it. The job template is what you and I would typically call a playbook run, but a job template is more than just a playbook run. A, pl a job template associates data from a project. Let me just go back 
data from a project is for example configuration that comes out of an SCM uh, with a playbook, maybe with the uh, an inventory, maybe with a bunch of credentials, credentials which we need for example to be able to log in via SSH to our infrastructure. All this comes together and is called a job template and these job templates can be strung together into workflow, um, into job workflows, uh, sorry workflow templates, that's the official term, and these workflow templates we can chain in such a way that we say uh, start with this uh, with this job template, if that was successful go to this top, uh, job template, else go to that one and then continue that way, okay? To what? I do not, okay. I, I no longer know what Puppet is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only half kidding. Um, we have as features in AWX also, of course, notifications. Um, notifications which can be emitted in um, in the positive case or a negative case. In other words, if a job template or a workflow template uh, are successful, we can notify and we can also notify, of course, if something fails. We have built-in logging. Finally, first logging becomes a first-class sort of citizen. Logging in Ansible engine, in sort of old-style Ansible, is pretty tragic. Uh, unless one works very hard for it. Uh, logging in AWX is really very, very nice. Um, I'll try and show you uh, different steps. And what we can also do is literally at the click of a mouse in the user interface is we can configure external log um, shippers, uh, Elk, so Logstash, uh, Sumo Logic, uh, help me somebody, uh, I've forgotten them. Um, Elk, Sumo Logic, uh, Splunk of course for those people who uh, no, unfortunately not Greylog. Unfortunately not Greylog. Um, but I suppose it's just a matter of, of time. I mean, it's, not, it's just a matter of, of creating a, an interface for that. And what we have as feature in AWX is a scheduler. We have this feature because, let us not forget, we now have here as AWX, we have something new. One of the advantages of Ansible is that we always say we don't need a specific configuration management server. Okay? We can configure from our laptops, for example. This, uh, this continues to be true, obviously, but using AWX, we suddenly have a management server. We have a management server which is there 24 by 7, and that is also very, very useful for something which is called provisioning callbacks, which I'll introduce in a moment. Um, so we have a scheduler, and the scheduler is basically a glorified cron. Uh, I, I call it glorified because uh, we can, uh, for example, specify start date and end date. Yeah? So start on the 1st of December, end on the 23rd of December, every three hours, or whatever, a quarter past. Um, all these things, obviously, also controllable, creatable, uh, readable via the API. I will say that another 12,000 times. Um, I'm just trying to go back one page, and I can't. That's quite interesting. There we are. Um, so this is a, a picture of the dashboard. Uh, just a few things uh, maybe that I would like to point out. First of all, interesting for, for customers is this logo at the top. That's a rather rustic looking logo that says AWX uh, that is normally branded with a very angry looking, totally aggressive potato, which is awful. Um, um, this is the official artwork, as it's called, and it is trivial during the installation of AWX to add your own brand there, so your own logo or whatever. Um, then we have um, a menu. By the way, Tower, uh, this is a, uh, Ansible AWX, screenshot of Ansible AWX. Tower is radically different. Everything you see here will be completely different. It starts with the menu not being vertical but horizontal on the top, so please, yeah, hang on there. No? And it also ends with the colors being slightly less rustic, so a bit more uh, light gray on white and things like that. But that's the, uh, those are the only difference. We have here on the top a number of um, information sort of buttons, uh, a number of hosts in our inventory, number of failed hosts, number of inventories in total that I have um, accessible here in AWX, inventory synchronizations, how many projects I have, etc. All these things, all these elements that we see here are live. The uh, user interface speaks WebSocket to the back end and is literally fed l simultaneously. So if one of you now via a curl request would start a job and the other via uh, a click and some, some other um, uh, interface thing, then we would suddenly see these graphs change and number of, uh, number of failed inventories, whatever, these projects, the templates that have been uh, run, etc. Green typically means 
uh, was successful. Red typically means was not successful. I can click on one of those um, buttons and bring up a log. Why wasn't it successful? Why was it successful? I see the recently used so-called job templates. I see the recently used runs when it ran here on the side. We can, at any moment, we can click on one of these buttons, the green or the red buttons, bring up a log of what happened. These logs are kept. Everything that we do is stored in a PostgreSQL uh, database. Everything we do, the, uh, the whole history of what we do, which is, of course, automatically cleaned out every 30 days or every however many days we want. Um, so we have full audit capability. Um, a rather nice thing is this. Here we see this little rocket that I showed earlier. And when I push on that rocket in, on, a, on, a, on an existing job run, that job, that playbook, that job template will run again with the same parameter. So upon launching a job template, I can, for example, give it Ansible extra vars, yeah, extra variables. I can give it a certain serialization with number of forks or a debug level, etc. And this information is associated with that job template run. So when I push the button, be it either physical or obviously via the API, because it's always the same thing, then that job template will run with the same, um, with the same parameters. Authentication and security in uh, AWX are yeah, more or less capitalized. We have a number of uh, different possibilities to authenticate users to AWX uh, itself. So we have, uh, let's say, local data, users which are created locally, be it either manually or inserted, injected from outside, of, obviously. We have the, uh, optionally, the social logins, GitHub and Google and whatever, which, for example, for most, at least, uh, enterprises in Germany would be completely out of the question, and I assume in Belgium or Holland or uh, Netherlands exactly the same. We have the enterprise logons, um, so Active Directory, SAML, um, LDAP, of course. Uh, interestingly, even Radius and Takax uh, authentication, which is quite, uh, to me, unusual to see in, a, in a, a piece of software like this, they actually work, and also Kerberos. In terms of security, when playbooks are run, in other words, when job templates are run, which kick off an actual playbook run, these are launched in their own namespace. So in Linux, in change root environments, the, the uh, actual playbooks are uh, uh, executed via their uh, de uh, via a dedicated user. It's called AWX. Doesn't matter what it's called because we don't see that user anyway. All this is, uh, is uh, remains quite uh, uh, opaque or yeah hidden to us actually. So they run in um, their own namespaces. And uh, very importantly, uh, since AWX is multi-tenant capable for different organizations or teams, etc., different projects. Um, these playbooks cannot interact with each other. So, uh, for example, if Chris or Peter launch their own job templates with their own playbooks, then whatever I do, I will not be able to access any of the data that they create. And by that, I mean really none of the data that they create. And this has also helped with um, role-based access control. Role-based access control, Fabian this morning mentioned a little bit about that. Uh, RBAC or role-based access control in AWX is, um, is very important. And that allows me to, for example, as an administrator, create a, um, a job template in which I associate a particular playbook from a particular project with a certain inventory, with certain credentials which we need, A, for logging in via SSH, B, perhaps we need network credentials for some router to be able to configure them, etc. All sorts of, all sorts of data. Now I can delegate this, um, this uh, template um, as execute right to, for example, my first level support uh, friend, that's Jane. And so Jane will, if she logs on, she will see, she can execute that playbook, that job template. But, and by giving her execute right on that job template, I am implicitly giving her any right which she requires to read data uh, which that job template uses. So when Jane logs in, she will see there is that one playbook that she can click on. Um, she can click on it, it will actually do stuff, it will log in via SSH, it will configure a network service, it will do whatever it has to do, but she will not be able to see which inventory was involved, she will not be able to see which keys were involved, which SSH keys, and she will certainly not be able to access that data, so she cannot actually read the inventory, she cannot read the keys, she cannot read the passwords, she can't even read the playbook, she can't see anything, she can basically not see anything except the job run and whichever 
uh, data it created in terms of logging. So logging information that the job was run, that it ran successfully or unsuccessfully, that she can of course see. And uh, this is uh, where we see that we have here uh, my uh, colleague Jane and uh, she gets an execute right on a particular uh, playbook and can then execute that playbook and as I say implicitly she gets any rights which she might uh, require to read that. In terms of inventories, inventories are also obviously in AWX. Let me please uh, go back just in case you're not very very familiar with AWX. Let me go back. We need in Ansible, we need an inventory, our let's say host file, which is uh, traditionally either in any style format or, a, or as a YAML uh, file format. We need that inventory in Ansible to be able to actually address uh, our hosts. These inventories also exist of course for AWX. We can have any number of inventories. These inventories uh, are not only comparable, they are the Ansible uh, inventories and uh, we can have multiple of them. We can, uh, out of the user interface, we can automatically sync with AWS, so Amazon Web Services with, uh, what are these people called, Google Compute Engine with Rackspace. We can of course use custom scripts. We cannot yet use uh, the new Ansible 2.4 inventory, inventory plugins, but nobody's going to care about that anyway. Who knows about inventory plugins? Okay, two, three, four, four people. Okay, so you might care, but you don't care, please, <laughs> because they just don't work. It's just not implemented yet. But that is not, uh, to my mind anyway, that is certainly not a uh, limitation. They will come sometime when it's ready. Uh, we can use our custom inventory scripts if we so desire. We can do something which is quite interesting. We can um, import an inventory from source code control. So we can, for example, that is what I was yelling to uh, Fabian this morning, in case you heard me mumble, I said um, you can um, bring in into AWX an inventory, any st uh, type uh, inventory or YAML type inventory via your um, source code control system. So that's something nice. There is uh, the possibility of actually importing inventory which probably nobody will use, would use, that's uh, done with a special um, Ansible or AWX manage command, which has to be done in a container, it's a bit messy, but that would be a possibility and the advantage is it brings in also your existing host vars and group vars. If you have something that is very, very static, you might be interested in doing that. And there's something called smart inventory. Uh, go figure what it is, please, because I've not yet understood it. Um, a smart inventory allows me to on the basis of existing inventories, say uh, I've got all those hosts there in that inventory and I would like now to select all hosts that start with WW. And that creates a new inventory and this new inventory is called a smart inventory. I fail to see what's smart about it, but you might like it. Um, right, then inventories are uh, automatically imported into AWX. And irrespective of where the inventory comes from, whether it's from inventory files, whether it's an AWS, so Amazon Web Service inventory, or custom script, or inventory imported via YAML, or via any whatever, irrespective of where that inventory comes from, they are imported into AWX and presented in a u stored and presented in a unified manner so that in the user interface, so that via the um, API, people get the same data. So even if it's... Um, if it's a, um, an imported inventory uh, here via a Git repository, I see this inventory in the user interface. Sorry, uh, the screenshot is a bit uh, lousy, but I see here the, the, there's a, a host called uh, alice.example.net, belongs in the group potato, and, and this w it's hard to differentiate this host from one that we might have created locally. Okay, So that's uh, basically a nice thing. Um, then the new terms, I've already mentioned that there are projects. Projects are a collection of jobs, a collection of jobs which um, uh, are associated with a, a source code control system. Uh, uh, theoretically, uh, playbooks could, be, uh, could reside on the file system. I have struck this through because this is something that will be removed. Um, Due to the fact that we can, um, we will be able to cluster uh, AWX, what could happen is an administrator creates a var, lib project, a var lib AWX projects and whatever, my playbook name, I'm PowerDNS for example, with my playbooks in it, 
and then uh, somebody says, uh, so Peter, for example, says, kicks off a job, and that is received by one of the uh, AWX components, and the AWX component decides, oh, uh, this machine here is far too, uh, far too highly loaded, let's uh, delegate it to another machine, okay? So this, the job run will be delegated to another machine, this other AWX task would then look in its file system and say, oops, where are the playbooks? Okay, they're not there. So that not being possible, this whole, this whole topic will sort of, will, will just die, it will be disabled. So projects and jobs, playbooks, etc., are synchronized in via uh, source code control. And um, yeah, that's where also where we create um, job templates, where we create uh, workflow templates. We can link jobs together with these workflow templates, etc. I mentioned something highfalutingly called real-time playbook output, and this is, uh, this is where, where it is. Um, what I see here is both, uh, well, it's the same page whether I've just launched a template or somebody else has just launched a template. Maybe Ton has just launched a template, and uh, I, can, I can look at this template, if I have the authentication uh, authorization to do so, I can look at this template being executed, and I would see my tasks here on the right. Everybody rec who's once used Ansible Playbook recognizes this here on the right. We have the same colors. Green is OK. Yellow is uh, whatever, changed. Red is failed, etc. Here I see um, status detail on this job. So I see, for example, that the status was successful, it's green. Here, by the way, is again that little rocket. I can say, yeah, that's exactly the job I want. Go. Yeah, launch that again with exactly the same parameters. But I'm not interested in that. I see when the job was started, when it was finished, with what the job template was called, what kind of a job it is. It's a run job, it's not a workflow job. Who launched it? So I see that the admin launched it. I would see also, for example, that a, a particular schedule launched it. So I can find out, I can determine which instance, what actually caused this job to run, which is uh, for us very important. I can see which inventory was used out of which project, which playbook with which project revision. So here's the six, six, six SHA, the first six characters of the, in this case, Git SHA. I can see which machine credentials were used. Machine credentials are, is a container which contains credentials, uh, be it username password or, or, or be it, uh, for example, SSH private key to log into my infrastructure. So that's all the information I, I uh, get there. Here on the top, I have a bar which shows me uh, the basic, uh, basic structure that's changed, otherwise green would be uh, unchanged. This job had one play with four tasks, one host was, um, was addressed and it elapsed in so, so much time. I can search through this output, and if you look here, this looks a little bit strange. It doesn't really look as though this is just print, print, or print F, print F, print F, and it isn't. It's actually uh, highly complex, and what we can do is also, while it's running, or also um, at, a, at a later time, before the uh, records are cleared out of the database, I can actually click on one of these colored lines. I can click on the result of a particular task for a particular host. And I get a pop-up showing me all metadata which was returned by that task, in other words, by that module. Now that is, to my mind, totally grand. That already, for me, is a reason to use AWX. So this is a little bit like after each individual module, after each individual task, register variable and then debug variable equals var equals variable name. Okay? That's really, really nice. And that is, of course, also saved in the database. How am I time-wise? Uh, when's, when's the end, please? Thank you. Um, the job list is a, uh, yeah, basically just a table of, uh, of jobs. Each job uh, that uh, launches gets an ID, has a little color, whether it ran or didn't run. We see the job name, a job type, a playbook run is, uh, is clear. That's a job template that ran and did a particular playbook. An SCM update, that's a job that will then synchronize um, the project with my repository, let's say Git or Subversion or Mercurial, whatever. By the way, these internal jobs here, SCM update or inventory sync, for example, these jobs internally are handled by Ansible Playbooks. So AWX is really a piece of software that uses its own dog food, that literally eats its own dog food, okay? Which I think is quite, quite uh, mentionable, which is probably the reason why I just mentioned it. Okay. So we have workflow jobs, workflow jobs I mentioned already. These are jobs which chain together different job templates. Uh, uh, this is the 
the result of a, of a workflow. This is not the workflow editor, which looks very similar. This is the result of a workflow job. The whole thing started here. We can see already here with the coloring on the top, um, it was okay until here, and then everything went south. Okay, and then, it, then, it, then it started failing. Huh? It was okay until here. So the whole thing started here. This template, this job template ran, then it caused a, uh, an error. Respectively, this template ran, it caused an error, and uh, this template was, um, or this workflow said, in the positive case, go up there, and the negative case, go down here. In other words, use either that job template or that job template. And this is how the workflow will then be uh, shown to me. I mentioned logging. Here's an example of a log output uh, which uh, is created by um, AWX. I clicked myself an elk uh, together and uh, this is a payload that was sent out and of course it can then be read by Logstash and Co and formatted and Splunk and whatever. We have uh, notifiers. Um, not all the ones, at least currently, not all the ones that we have, uh, not all the notification modules that we have in um, Ansible. For example, I, for some reason, happened to notice that the MQTT notification module was missing, but I'm sure it's just a matter of time. So we have these uh, emails or SMTP. We have Mattermost. Uh, Mattermost and Slack is also there. Uh, Twilio, IRC, of course, uh, PagerDuty, HipChat, and uh, Webhooks. The can we call them industry standard webhooks, whereby a notification payload is then uh, emitted by AWX and uh, posted to a um, HTTP or an HTTPS, of course, um, endpoint. And I can then pick up that payload. And that payload contains uh, data such as, um, uh, such as this, um, status and which credentials were used and what the job name is and when it started, when it stopped, etc. All the uh, uh, complete information of that, uh, of that job, yeah? which playbook, playbook was used, which inventory was used, etc. Um, I've mentioned already several times the word credentials. Mm. Credentials? Credentials are some little packages, mini containers, let's say, data containers, which will typically contain username and password to be able to log into a remote system, or which could typically contain a username and an SSH uh, private key and its passphrase to do the same thing, to log into a remote system. And so there are credentials for all sorts of things, for AWS, for these uh, so-called machine credentials, which contain keys, uh, SSH keys, for example. We have um, credentials which we can use for our software configuration management tools, so in other words, to be able to pull uh, our Git or Mercurial or Subversion repository, of course, Red Hat Insights. We have a, a credential, uh, a type of credential for Ansible Vault. If you, do you use Ansible? Who uses Ansible Vault actively? Okay. Interesting. Uh, I didn't, uh, there were, I think, three or four hands. I didn't expect so many. Um, for VMware, etc. And we have something that is called custom credentials because the makers, uh, the creators of AWX said, well, we can sort of foresee w typical things that we need, but uh, we, we, we cannot foresee everything. Now, um, if you know me, you know I do a lot with uh, different types of open source DNS servers, and I'm going to, or my friends from PowerDNS are there, I'm going to uh, construct an example. I would like to do, I would like to create a module, an um, Ansible module for uh, using the uh, PowerDNS authoritative API. And for that, I need a password. Okay? I need a password. I have to store that password somewhere. Now, Vault would be one possibility um, that I could use. Uh, but with cu so called custom credentials, we have something that might be more elegant, and you actually might prefer it over Vault. And this is what a custom credential looks like, not for PowerDNS, but um, just as a, as a type. This is something I created. So I created a custom credential type called, if in case you can't read, I'm dictating it, called PASTA. And what I actually have here is a credential called lunch access, and that is of that type PASTA. And this uh, custom credential type that I created has three names, uh, three uh, variables, 
One is called user ID, one is called password, and the other is called uh, pasta, which type of pasta you want. So that contains some sort of user, that contains a password, and as we see, the password is not displayed, and that contains some other value, and this is a multiple choice va value. I type rice in there upon creating the credential, and the system says rice is not one of the supported spaghetti, fettuccine, or whatever, girandole, okay? So I have multiple, sort of multiple choice values, or, or yeah, multiple choice uh, values. And what I do when creating a custom credential type, I have what is called an input configuration and an injector configuration. And the input configuration basically says, a small YAML, I'm sorry, Peter, I said the word. I wanted to avoid the word YAML this afternoon. Um, it contains a small YAML or JSON um, description of these fields. So I will create an input configuration which has a description for a field called UID and a field called password and a field called whatever it is here, pasta. And then I have an injector configuration. And this injector configuration tells AWX how does my playbook, how does my system, how does my job template then, when the whole thing actually starts running, how does it want my uh, how, how do I want my variable? So, for example, the injector configuration might specify, please create uh, extra vars, Ansible extra vars, yeah, which are then given to me, and I can use these in my playbook or in my Jinja, from my Jinja templates, etc. The important bit, or maybe two important bits about the, uh, these custom credentials, three important bits about these custom credentials, is first of all, we have a user interface. So, this input configuration done once will create this user interface, which other projects, other um, members of my team can use. Important bit number two is that with the injector configuration, we can, we can cause these values to literally appear in our job templates, in our Jinja templates, in such a way that, we're, that we can use them as we would use any other variable. And important, most important bit number three is that we have these values are secured, they are protected in the AWX database, in the PostgreSQL database, uh, just like any other credential values uh, are secured. Here I have an example of a machine credential type. Here you see a username and here you see the begin of a wonderful story that is an open SSH private key. Okay, I pasted that in there. And here I have a private key passphrase. Now this is something that most of us really don't want to have lying around because these, this private key will be used or can be used to access a certain infrastructure of mine. Okay, so I really don't want you to have that. And in particular, of course, here, I, I neither want you to have the private key nor, nor especially the, its passphrase. Now, as soon as I press enter here, respectively save, AWX encrypts these values with a three tuple. And the tuple consists of the following data, a secret key, which is... Um, which we uh, specify upon installing AWX, so we know that. Um, the field name, so for example, SSH key or SSH passphrase, field name, literally. And number three is a row ID, the PostgreSQL row ID. Yeah? This three tuple creates a secret key, a secret encryption key, which is used to save this data in Postgres and decrypt it on the fly. Also, AWX ensures that upon decrypting this, so in other words, um, using this data to, for example, feed OpenSSH with that, it will not um, leave the data insecure in uh, files. It will use named pipes, for example, to inject the private key into SSH, okay? And the same thing happens, obviously, with uh, the, same, the same mechanisms I use for um, our, um, our custom credentials. Yeah, we have uh, webhooks. Uh, I think most people should know webhooks. Here's uh, an example payload. As I was uh, saying before, we can also, when we specify a webhook target URL, this is for notifications, when we specify webhook target URL, we can also specify um, headers, HTTP headers, which our webhook processor, our webhook receiver can use to determine whether it was actually the webhook or was whether somebody's just sort of fooling around with me. Clustering um, will happen in AWX, respectively, is happening in AWX. Um, an AWX cluster is uh, something that will be created not, not for failover. Um, so it's our job to ensure that these machines always run. It is done for load balancing. Okay. 
it is done for load balancing because what must not happen here uh, sorry here we have two two members uh, an AWS cluster will have three minimum so if we want to cluster we'll have three members minimum and it will the plan is that the, it will always be an uh, an odd number and um, and on these uh, these cluster members co uh, contain something that's called um, the AWX web, so those are the web components. I'll show you a bit more detail in a moment. The actual clustering part, which is done with RabbitMQ and AMQP in the background, and the actual job tasks, which run controlled by an AWX scheduler, and those are salary, um, Python salary modules, Python salary the task queue, which actually runs the um, Nobody's listening, otherwise you could help me. The playbooks, thank you. Uh, at the bottom we have PostgreSQL. Uh, it is our task, it is our job to ensure that uh, that PostgreSQL, for example, is, um, is clustered, has failover, is backup, and things like that. A AWX does, will not take care of that for us. A bit more about the internals. This is a, a diagram which was created by Matt, who's the chief architect. We have the AWX web components, which are here. This is an, uh, contains an Nginx, the UWSGI, and Django on the top there. This is also this is here on the top. That's where our web browser connects to. That's where our um, API uh, client connects to. Thank you. Um, and uh, this data is brought down, uh, usually, of course, uh, added to Postgres. It is transferred to the other cluster members via Rabbit, uh, RabbitMQ. And here in the AWX task part of the engine is the AWX scheduler, which was created by Ansible.com. Here we have the salary engines. And here we have our callback receivers and fact cache receivers. These callback receivers in particular are those are the components that are responsible for obtaining information about um, each playbook, uh, playbook start, playbook stop, play run, uh, play start, play stop, each task start, each task, and, and all that is brought back and transferred via RabbitMQ into Postgres. And optionally, if somebody's listening on the top there, it goes all the way back up here via WebSockets and it's then displayed in, we had the example before, in Ton's browser because he was the one who started that. Right, my time is running out, I'm talking too much. Um, REST API. REST API, like any other REST API. Um, so anything that we can do, um, we here, for example, I'm launching a job template and I'm passing in extra variables into that job template. Okay, so this is something that, for example, an external system such as uh, the way that Fabian explained this morning with Jenkins, or maybe you have Rundeck or BuildBot, as was. Uh, uh, warmly recommended to me earlier. Those are systems, or some some button, some USB button you you press, and it creates a um, an a REST API call. Um, there is also a utility, it's an open source utility, which is created with um, together with uh, AWX. So they, they they build it hand in hand and Tower CLI, which I at the beginning thought, well, who needs that? I mean, we have curl, who needs Tower CLI? I've changed my mind. Meanwhile, I could show you an example, um, not now, but sometime later. We can literally with that in quite easy form with a language that I'm not supposed to uh, say now, but it uh, resembles or it is easily convertible to JSON, uh, which we can create, for example, users or SSH keys and things like that. Okay. Now comes something, and this is the moment of truth. This is the moment where you will, well, no, I don't know whether you will, but you ought to sort of start throwing money. And this is the moment where you say, well, yeah, now I've understood what it's all about. Remember I said uh, in the introduction that uh, typically we have Ansible, Ansible Playbook runs, which will uh, go out, which will connect out via SSH and deploy um, deploy in push mode onto our into our server infrastructure into our machine infrastructure and for many people that is fine but there are occasions where that is not so fine for example when you have machines which are cold standby which are powered off or which are currently disabled or whatever these machines will never get updates because they're not there they're not on so it would be lovely if if we could have a system by which one of these machines suddenly boots up for example boots up either initially or sometime later, maybe it's come up uh, right now out of Pixie Boot with Kickstart and talks to AWX and says, hi, it's me. Send me what you have for me, please. Okay? So we basically want this 
push method that Ansible uh, offers us, but occasionally would like this pull method. And that we can have with so-called provisioning callbacks. Provisioning callbacks allow me to associate a particular template, a particular job template, with a, um, with a so-called host config key, it's just a magic number, and I distribute this magic number, and I distribute a, a special URL to this job template run. Now, however I want, either via kickstart, or via cron, or via I type it in, or via shell script, or via, it doesn't matter. If I ensure that this um, host config key is posted to that URL, the following thing is going to happen. AWX gets this request, so the request comes up here. AWX gets this request, um, looks at the source IP address, um, resolves that address, tries to, uh, attempts to um, reverse resolve that address to find a host name, and will now look at the Ho it will now search for the hostname and for the IP address in the inventory which is associated with that particular job template. Okay? Exclusively in the inventory which is associated with that particular host template. Now, it might well be that that inventory is, for example, a dynamic inventory. It might well be that that inventory has been synchronized in over, um, over for example, a repository. So in other words, it might be that uh, AWX does not yet know whether it's actually in that inventory. So this query that, we, that comes in, this HTTP POST request that comes in, might actually trigger an inventory synchronization. AWX then checks, um, is that okay? Is, do I know this host? And if the answer is no, let's go away. If the answer is yes, AWX turns around and runs now this template, this job template, but not for the whole infrastructure, just for that one host. So even if this job template by default targets all web servers that we have, it will, in this particular case, target exclusively this one host. Okay? You are now allowed to applaud or cry or whatever. So, um, th yeah, those are uh, provisioning callbacks. <sighs> those are provisioning callbacks. We can work with uh, webhooks, of course. We can, we we can uh, do things like, I, I wrote a small article about this. We can do things like, for example, as I mentioned earlier, I don't like clicking, so I, I wouldn't necessarily like to always have to use AWX, although I'm, I'm, I, it's a grand product. But I wouldn't necessarily always like to have to click. But I don't have to. So I can, for example, or those of us who can, we could, for example, create, um, we could commit our playbooks. And that playbook commit would trigger uh, some sort of hook which then kicks on the API and says uh, do a synchronization, do a, do a, a project synchronization, and then push it out. Um, one and a half words, no, a quarter word uh, about installation. Installation is currently possible with, um, in three different forms, with either OpenShift or MiniShift, with Docker, or with Kubernetes. Any other question you have to installation, I will now clearly answer. No. <laughs> I think that's quite clear, no? Um, these are the uh, possible installation mechanisms. So local Docker, OpenShift or MiniShift, or Kubernetes. Um, what feels like every 12 and a half milliseconds on the AWX, uh, on the Ansible AWX channel in IRC, Somebody says, can I? No, you can't. And you, the, the reason you can't is AWX internally consists of a sh boatload of software components. And these, these software components need to work really hand in hand. Okay? And they keep breaking their own stuff, so it, it's really highly complex. And that's why there are these installation mechanisms. Of, co of course, you're welcome to do what you, what you like, because it's all open source. But if you want any form of hand-holding or support, these are the three possibilities and to answer the question that you haven't asked yet, but which you will, uh, the database is called PostgreSQL and the answer to any other question in that uh, form is also no. <laughs> um, right, this is what that ugly, stupid, and I wish I could kick the person who chose that, uh, that's what the angry potato looks like. I don't know who did it. I think I know who did it, but I don't really know who did it. That's, what, that's the angry potato. I've. Hmm? No, cow, a cow is better. This, this thing, this has actually caused me to become 
aggressive at my own desk completely alone. I, I don't know why. I, have, I really have a problem with this image. I, don't, I honestly don't know why. Um, and there's a fix you can have, for example, here. There are, there's a, a, a transparent logo, or you can use the official, the, official, um, uh, the official branding if you say, yes, I agree to the... To the um, to the uh, to the legal, yeah, thank you. And I think I am perfectly timed. I don't know how I did it, and have fun automating. Thank you. Yes, sir. You have to speak up. I'm a bit deaf. What, uh, in 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 what way you mean integration? Okay, um, I cannot really answer the question, so, but if there are integrations to Tower, then those integrations will also exist to AWX. It will, at some stage, it is not currently the case, but it will at some stage be exactly the same code stream. So AWX is being, is being worked on, and periodically, I don't know when, that will happen sometime, uh, periodically um, Red Hat will take, uh, will take part of this code and will say, okay, we'll call this now Tower release, whatever. 4.0, okay? And uh, so if you have integrations between something and Tower, those will of course also work with, with um, AWX. I cannot exactly say where there are such integrations. Integrations in form of, for example, modules or inventory modules and things like that, those continue working. Those work like they work with Ansible also, okay? Okay, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot answer your question. I, I don't know. Uh, Dach, do you happen to know? Do you mean Modules to manage? No, not modules, no. Kicking, la launching jobs, for example. To my knowledge, uh, these things do not yet exist, but it's uh, thanks to, did I mention API? Um, <laughs> no. Okay, let me tell you about it. Um, it, it, should, it should theoretically be more or less trivial. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.